We're going to be building a cast iron surface plate pattern for Emma's spare room tool competition. So let's get to it. All right, make sure you get your safety glasses on. All right, disclaimer, you know, this, this kind of a cut is not recommended. Uh, this is way too long for what it is and it could rock a little bit, but uh, you know, I really don't have much other choice here at the moment. So that's what we're gonna try. Make sure I can count to 10 here at the end of this. All right, that'll be the top of our surface plate. And for right now, these are all these cuts are at 90 degrees. Uh, that'll let us decide. I can see already there's a little dent in that, so we might want to put that to the bottom. All right, so to make these wedge-shaped pieces, what we need to do is make something that looks sort of like this. So we're going to tilt the saw and we're going to make all these angled cuts in the board and we're going to leave a, a little bit here in the very center that will be kind of you know unmolested. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide this board in half, which is approximately an inch and a quarter, and we'll cut off the piece and it'll actually leave a little bit of a leg to hold this thing up while we're cutting it off. So th this is kind of a good tip for if you're going to make this sort of a, when you start getting into cutting these bevels and stuff, it, you know, you couldn't just stand it up and cut it, flip it around and cut the other side. It's, it's going to be really unstable. It's going to want to tip over. So that, this is kind of a good way to go about it. And I'll stop and I'll show you each step along the way. All right, I got the saw tilted over seven degrees in this direction here. So that'll be 14 degrees of uh, draft in this part. So I want this to come out. These are going to be kind of pretty big, you know, uh, big cores that are going to be hanging in the mold so I don't want it to I don't want it to get broken off just trying to get the pattern out uh, all right so we're set fence is locked down we have to cut on the opposite side of the blade here and uh, I think we're just about set to go so let's make some parts All right, scorching it just a little bit. I think the blade needs to be cleaned up some. Been cutting a lot of pine, so it's got some pitch, I think, on there. Anyway, so now you see this will sit nice and flat still, and we can saw it all the way through here, and it won't try to collapse in on the blade when we, when we break through, which would be really scary. All right, so this thing is two and a half inches wide. So I've centered the blade on an inch and a quarter, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and rip this into two pieces. This is the reason we did this here. All right, I got my stop set. I trimmed off this end so I got a nice clean end. I'm gonna make four pieces here, about five and a half. We're gonna cut them down some more anyway, but just to rough them. Right, that's the floor that's going to form the frame. So let's work on making some 45s. All right, let's make a trial cut here, see if it'll cut all the way to the corner. I think that'll work. That's the beauty of that thing it makes really nice miters so i think we'll go with that let me get the top and we'll sort of put it on here and see how it looks all right well i think that looks pretty good on there it's about the right size so we'll go with that i guess the next step is uh well, we'll probably have to plane off our our stuff here and glue this little frame together and then we'll we'll work on uh cutting out the cross Gonna use a just a chisel. 
You got to make sure you're following the grain, otherwise it'll split into where you're trying to go. But we can kind of hog off quite a lot. That gets most of it off of there. And we come through and just kind of pare down right to the base of this wood. And honestly, this is leaving a really nice finish. Better than my hand plane was and even faster. Look at that, how nice that is. All right, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite ways of gluing up a frame. So I took scotch tape and I taped all these joints together, except for the very end one. And then you can fold it up and it'll, it'll hold together really nice. This is actually pretty durable once you've got the last piece taped on there until so you can set it down wherever you want to let it dry. We'll fold it up and glue this thing together. All right, wish me luck here. So we cut the angle on these here at seven degrees. So what I've done, I've tipped my saw back over at seven degrees and I put a center line right here. Uh, I just used a chisel, so you probably can't see it. I'm gonna try to cut to that and we're gonna try to make it to where, I don't wanna handle this too much here, but we're gonna try to make a piece that will fit in here and lay in all these compound miters. So uh, that's slightly maddening trying to work out all that stuff. Uh, it's very easy to accidentally cut your bevel the wrong direction, so. All right, so let me show you what I did here. So I've got, got the original cut that I made there and I needed to kind of mark it out so I could find where I need to make my next cut. So I, I just laid this on here on the face that's gonna match that. And then uh, I drew lines on the inside, I put a center line here. I could see the center of that. I just scratched it off. Now I have that and I can line that mark up with my saw blade, all right? So I've got my stop set, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and go on faith that this is right. If not, I've got more material. It's always good to have a little extra material. All right. So it turns out I can't get this uh, this thing flipped around to be in there the right way. So what I've done, I just transferred my lines across, and uh, this would be really tough to kind of figure out another way to cut it on this saw. I wish the saw, if the saw tilted the other direction, it'd be easy, but it's not. So when all else fails, get you a handsaw. So I'm going to go into the shop and uh, I'm just going to cut it off and I'll come back and we'll, we'll look at the results and see how good of a job I do. All right. Well, I cut the first piece here. Uh, this side actually came out fairly all right. And that fits in there pretty good. It's not perfect. Well, that's all right. We weren't aiming for absolute perfection. There's a little gap. We're going to have to put putty on this anyway. Uh, the other side here is not so good. There's a pretty good size gap actually down here. But that is to the bottom of the top. So uh, we're going to have to put putty and stuff in here and put a big fill on all that anyway. So really, this will work just fine. Uh, we'll have to make two more pieces to go across there, and that'll give us our X bracing. Okay, so I've almost got it finished now, but on this part here, it's going to sit that way when we're looking at the bottom. But in order to cut it, because this saw has to tilt that direction, uh, yeah, we flip it upside down, but this, this little T piece that I left on there has been very invaluable. It almost fits. I just need to trim just a little bit more off. So uh, we're going to try shaving it here just a hair. So I'm just going to kind of put it against the blade and sort of just put a little strain on it just to see if we can't whisk off just the smallest amount. All right, here we go. All right, let's have a look, see how this fits. All right, that looks pretty good. These two pieces aren't quite lining up just right. 
Not quite sure why that happens, but I don't know. Well, <clears throat> I think we can get them to go into position. All right, so I want to put uh, some sort of a boss in this area right here and over here also so that I can drill in and we can put handles on this and that'll make it so you can pick this plate up and apply it to something and move it around or whatever. Uh, it would be really difficult to pick this thing up if you didn't have some kind of a handle on it. So uh, We're going to use this little piece of 2x2 two two pine here and uh, cut bevel on it and glue it in there and then we'll uh, kind of cut it to fit after it's glued into place. All right, that'll give us the seven degrees that'll mate onto the uh, the, the uh, bracing of the plate. All right, so we're going to use the miter gauge here. I put a 10 degree angle on here, so we're going to clip off this end, and then we're going to miter the other side. And yeah, we got to make two of these parts. Just a little reality check. Yeah, that looks right. Slightly below the surface. Yeah, that one's good. Okay, number two. All right. I'll drop that in there. And then whenever I glue something like this, I kind of like to rub it a little bit. And it'll sort of it'll push out most of the glue, and then it kind of sticks. And you actually won't need to glue or to clamp that joint. It'll that will glue up just fine right there. We'll wait for this to cure, and then we got to come through and we got to put fillets in all this stuff. And we're gonna also we're overhung here a lot. We're gonna come through and trim this off on the on the table saw. Okay, so we need to put our draft onto the. The top of this here so i've got my saw tilted that way uh, just one and a half degrees because i don't want to have to machine off very much along these outside edges uh, when we go to start working on this so i got the cross cut in there we'll do the cross cut sides first which is in general good practice all right well i think that's just about the pattern complete we just need to get a little paint on here a little finish sanding and such and then, uh, then we have to go make some castings. That'll be the next part of the video. If you enjoyed this kind of content, go ahead and click on the old uh, horizontal milling machine. Check the videos coming up. And make sure you go visit Emma's Spare Room Competition uh, playlist.